Welcome to Paradise, Coronado, California. Slight breeze, otherwise it's a perfect day, about 70 degrees. And it's the year of the 50th anniversary of the Beatles. So, 50 years ago today, I'm going to be interviewing people about the Beatles, what they think, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to use my Liverpool accent too, sometimes. Sometimes I won't. You know what I mean? All right. Well, some of the lyrics are just, uh, whenever I hear them, I just go right back to the days of the cabin. When I was a young man, I worked across the street in a tailor shop called Jackson the Tailor, about a half a block from Matthew Street. And uh, at lunchtime, I'd go down to the cabin because it was a lunchtime concert and have a coke and a hot dog a little hot dog and a little coke because they were in England a little and uh, it was the the most exciting part of my day and actually my life because the Beatles were not yet famous and uh, they played for next to nothing at this little place dirty old warehouse down a side street when all the other buildings were still fruit warehouses this was the only one that was turned into a kind of a nightclub and it looked like a tunnel a dirty tunnel, <laughs> the brick, brick tunnel, and they were at the very end on a stage singing, three cool cats, three cool cats, another 50s rock stuff, and American pop. So they just actually were playing covers. Anyway, we'll see what some other people have to say about all this in the land of Oz. This is the town where Frank L. Baum came to write The Wizard of Oz. So it's got, and there are all sorts of unusual and eccentric people in this community. And I'm one of them. All right, so let's find some people here, see what they have to say about it. All right. Good. God bless America. And Holy Silent. Hello. Are you following me? Yes, you there. Cheeky bugger. Go on. Yeah. What are you up there? Off you go there. I saw you. He's probably trying to rob me watch or something. Better watch out for these blackbirds. Say hi. <laughs> what a life, huh? Where we live in Coronado. Oh, Graham for the Coronado Clarion. And I'll do a bit of Beatles accent here. So interview some lads here. All right, lads. So you love the Beatles, right? Yeah, absolutely. Who's your favorite Beatle? John. And why is that? He just had more imagination, not you know, pun intended. If you look and listen to Abbey Road, he just blew it away. Um, and Paul was his partner, so it was kind of symbiotic, really. I think. Paul was his partner, but Paul had relied too much on his pop sensibility, whereas John liked to push borders and still stay with his pop sensibility. Very technical, lad. Yeah. Now listen, I grew up in Liverpool and we used to talk like this when I first came over here, but people said to me, what do you mean water? It's water. And so I got shamed into changing my accent. Now it's mid-Atlantic. Yeah. But if ever I go back to Liverpool... It kicks back in. No. People kick it back in. Yeah. They say to you, if you're sitting there, like I was sitting there last time in the pub, and, I, and this fella said to me, do you know me? And I said, and I'm sorry, lad, I don't. He said, well, I fucking know you. <laughs> you know, that's not a swear word in Liverpool. Right, right. And I said, do you remember when you were at a snotty nose and you lived in Kingsley Road? And I said, yeah. If so he said, well, what's the matter with your accent? And I said, I, what do you mean? He said, you've gone all Yankee on us, haven't you? So, you know what I mean? They, they don't tolerate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so what about uh, the rest of the Beatles? George Harrison was... Well, Ringo brought... Not, well, Ringo was a good drummer. He was a solid drummer. He's what they needed. But he wasn't a phenomenal drummer. He just kind of kept time for the rest of them. Harrison was also a genius, but I think Paul and John had just strong, you know, stronger personalities. Very interesting. How about you, son? I'd rather not. I'm sorry. Oh, you just got a criminal record, evidently. Yeah, exactly. All right. No, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Well, that's very interesting because most people have two or three syllables to say. Oh, you, but you seem to know a lot about the Beatles, don't you? Love them. Yeah. Well, they are. Then say hello to people in Liverpool. Go on. Hey, guys. Can you try it with a Liverpool accent? Say, all right, yeah, okay. How's it going? I hope it's going again. <laughs> try that. Go on. 
Oh, all right, lads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that. <laughs> all right, lads. All right, all right. Here's from Germany. Yes. And he's, I saw him reading a book, and it's the, the Bob Dylan Chronicles. And I asked him where you're from. He said Germany. I said, you read English? And he went, no, it's in German. So how about that? He's reading a German translation of the Bob Dylan Chronicles. So, you love the Beatles. Yes. They influenced you when you were little because they were rebellious against the old god. And, and so, who is your favorite Beatle? I think uh, the favorite for me is the George Harrison. George Harrison, because? He's uh, mysterious, <laughs> he's uh, quiet, and, yeah. and his contribution, I think, is underestimated. Yes, he was never fully given uh, recognized. Yeah, yeah, it's like Ringo. He sang one song, but George went on to do his own stuff. But uh, he was the spiritual one of the yes, whole thing. He was a sweet, gentle man. In fact, John Lennon was really pushy in his in every request to get his songs published, to get management, to get to the top, what the top of the top. And he also was like that with girls. He pushed his way and got all the girls. And Paul McCartney often complained about it, but George was very quiet and. Uh, but he wrote some lovely stuff of his own that was completely different from the Beatles, didn't he? And Paul went on to write his stuff. And yeah. But it's all so lasting. And now it's the 50th anniversary. And it's like, to me, it's just as wonderful as ever. So tell me what you think of the music. And do you have a favorite song? I have uh, mm, last song I, I heard very often was uh, from, from his from his last uh, LP when he when he was very ill it's uh, called the uh, rising oh yeah I forgot the name uh, yeah it eludes me right something now something with, with rising uh, I'll look it up he, but yeah he, he made this LP together with his son and uh, with uh, the ELO Jefflin that's right electric light orchestra you know I was just prompted to tell you one thing he did out of character because he was not a street fighter and we will knit neither of the all of the Beatles came from the upper corner of Liverpool they didn't but but he was not a fighter in any way but one time somebody broke into his house and yes. actually fought him off and he got yeah. stabbed so it shows you that even the most gentle people can be pushed he was but, injured with a, with a knife yeah but he got rid of the he overcame the burglar yeah, he, yeah. he overcame it but uh, then afterwards, he got a, he got a, a severe cancer. Yeah, very sad. Very sad. Yeah. But look what he left for us. So God bless you, George, up in heaven. And uh, happy 50th Beatles anniversary to you, young man. Thanks.